Welcome to worship here at Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd. We're glad that you joined us this morning. It appears that our sanctuary has gotten a lot larger. It now includes your living rooms, your homes, um, throughout this community and beyond. It's good that we can gather together in this way. Today we're gonna to be celebrating the fifth Sunday of Easter and we'll be celebrating Mother's Day. We give thanks to God for our mothers and for those who have been like mothers to us. Thank you, God, for my mom. I love you, Mom. Thank you, God, for my mom. Thank you, God, for our mom. We give a special thank you this morning for our musical people, including Dane Ahrens that gave us the prelude, and Megan Browning Baldus who will be doing a song for us, and our Joyful Noise Choir as of 2018 under the direction of Heather Honer will be leading one of our songs. And then our sending song today will be sung by Reese Huffmeyer, and we thank our musicians for helping us out with worship this morning. Today we are continuing a theme that was started last week with uh, the theme of the Lord being our shepherd. And our opening song today is Shepherd Me, O God. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff, my comfort. 
shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us with your goodness in all that we experience. Guide us by your voice that we may walk with you through the uncertainties of this time. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning, everybody. It is time for the children's sermon, and today's children's sermon is being filmed at Jasper's Lego table. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only parent out there who is thanking God for Legos right now. As we are safe at home, as we are sheltered at home, these Legos have been a lifesaver, as I'm sure you can imagine. But another fun thing to imagine is how something like Legos can help kids grow in their faith. Something like Legos can help us experience a Bible story in a totally new way. And because of the magic of technology, I get to show you some of the things that the Sunday school kids have been doing at home. We had a Lego challenge recently, and here are some of the photos that were sent in. The first photo is of Ben and Amelia, and you can see in this photo, they are holding crosses. That was one of the challenges is to build a cross out of Legos. This next photo was sent in by Landon and his family. And not only did he build uh, crosses, but he also built an altar. And if you even want to pause this video and look even closer, you can see that Landon has the communion elements right there out of Legos, which is so cool. Our friend Charlotte built Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd out of Legos. And you can see there's the door that people walk in. There's flowers next to the door. The cross is back there. And in the way back, there's the playground complete with a tire swing. So thank you, Charlotte, for building our church. Now, a second part of the Sunday School Lego Challenge, there was how you can build a cross or you can build a church. But the second challenge was to build what does helping look like? As in Sunday school, we've been talking about helping others all year long. So what does helping look like? And here's a couple pictures sent in. The first one was sent in by Ruby and Connor. And in their photo, uh, they built a house. And you can see that kids are helping pick up and clean up their toys, which is a great way that kids can help right now. And then the last photo is from Jasper and his dad. They talked about people helping at restaurants by making food and serving food. And so it's a great thing to celebrate. What does helping look like? What a great Lego challenge. So if you haven't done those Lego challenges yet, again, it, it's build a cross uh, or build a church, build a scene of people helping each other. That's a great Lego challenge. But you can also do a Lego challenge with any Bible story. So today we are doing Psalm 23 and how Jesus is our good shepherd. And so here's something that Jasper and I built. We have our, our sheep and our shepherd uh, with Psalm 23. We have this sheep is in green pastures and we've got a sheep that is being led along still waters. And we've got a shepherd there. And if, you tw if we twist the scene a little bit, you can see that there's a sheep in a little bit of trouble, uh, kind of on the edge of a valley about to fall down a cliff. And so that represents the valley of the shadow of death. But thankfully, we know that the Lego shepherd is right there to help. So you can build Psalm 23 out of Legos. Another thing we're going to hear in our Bible stories today is Jesus talking about uh, a gate and so this is another sheep that we built and complete with a fence and a gate. And so all sorts of new ways that we can grow in our faith while we are at home. And one more Lego challenge, um, if I haven't given you enough already, 
is to think about Mother's Day and a Mother's Day Lego challenge. Can you build a heart for Mother's Day out of Legos? Can you build the letters that spell out mom for Mother's Day? Could you build a flower or a bouquet of flowers or a garden of flowers? Those would all make amazing gifts for Mother's Day. And another thing like we've just seen, if there's somebody really special that you would like to think of this Mother's Day, but you can't see them in person, maybe a grandma or an aunt or a very special friend, you can build something out of Legos, take a picture and send it to them. And that's just a wonderful gift to show that you love them, that you're thinking of them, that you're celebrating them today. So look at that. Legos can teach us Bible stories. Legos can help us share God's love, especially today on Mother's Day. So I hope that if you are at home with kids, you will dig out the Legos and do some of those Lego challenges today. And so let's say a little prayer. You can repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for today. Thank you for Legos. Help us grow in our faith. Help us share your love in lots of different ways. Amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in today. Have fun with those Lego challenges. Have a great week, everybody. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run away from him, because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. I start out with one of my earliest memories. It was mid-afternoon in summer. The sky was filled with blue and the day was warm. I was playing in the sandbox under a great big tree. I'd been filling the pockets of my red pants with sand when I heard this sound that made me look up. The sound was bigger than the branches of the trees, so I headed for the open space of our lawn, still looking up, trying to find out what was making that sound. My eyes found a long white stripe across the sky. The stripe trailed out behind a silver thing, moving slowly high up in that blue sky. I was amazed by the sight. I ran the whole way back to the house, a distance of about 30 feet. I remember being all excited as I stood in the kitchen, trying to tell Mom what I saw. I pointed up with my arms as I babbled out the story. Mom didn't seem to understand what I was saying, so I told her again. But I didn't have 
I didn't know many words yet, and I was doing my best, and Mom listened to my random syllables, and then she led me back outside and saw me point up at the sky. Mom smiled and said, that's an airplane, airplane. And as she spoke, Mom joined me in pointing up at the sky. And I learned a new word, and I also knew that I had been understood. Mom went back into the house, probably to sweep up some sand. And I went back to my work, being a child, discovering the world. This is the earliest memory that I have of my mom. I remember the excitement of rushing to her to tell her about this great thing that I'd seen, and I remember her listening, her understanding me. On that particular day, I learned a new word from my mom. I learned the word airplane. This was one in a whole string of words that I was learning because my mom took time to teach me. Soon I also learned that it would be better for me not to put sand in my pockets. The word associated with that was the word no. As the months rolled on, I learned a lot of words from mom and from dad. I did pretty well with a lot of the words, but I did have some bit difficulty with that one word, no. I'd reach out for lamp cords and electrical plug-ins, no. I'd toddle out towards the road, no. I'd start my way up a ladder to help dad with some painting, no. I'd crawl up on the farm machinery, no. And then as the years passed, the word kept coming. Can I stay out until midnight? No. Can I borrow the car to go to Ken's party? No. Can I quit going to confirmation? No. Thanks to God, my parents did not give up on protecting me from myself. As I look back on it now, it occurs to me that I had, I had had a shepherd looking out for me. My Lord God had been working through my parents to be my shepherd, to keep me from harm, to lead me in right pathways so that I would be led to places that restore my soul. So we celebrate Mother's Day today. Perhaps some of you young people have gotten something ready to let your mom know how special she is to you. Perhaps you drew a picture, or maybe you planted a seed and began to grow a flower, or maybe you planned an activity for her. Perhaps you've already given her one of your special big hugs, maybe while saying something like, I love you, Mom. Mothers have always been special workers for God. As best as they can, they give you the care and the love that you need. When you say Happy Mother's Day and you give your mom a hug, you can thank God at the same time for giving you this special person who loves you and cares for you so deeply. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Jesus made you his own in baptism. You belong to him. And he promises that he will be your shepherd. He will look out for you all the days of your life. God takes care of you and gives you what you need. God watches over you like a loving shepherd watches over a flock of sheep. God does this first off, mostly through your parents and through people who have been like parents to you. Ever since you were born, God has given you these people who would take care of you. They fed you, they kept you warm, they kept you safe. They took care of your needs. They made it so that you would not be in want. Just as a shepherd makes sure his sheep have food and clothing and shelter, God makes sure that you have food and clothing and a home. We read about this in the Bible. The 23rd Psalm says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The next verses in the 23rd Psalm say, He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside 
still waters, he restores my soul. Here God is telling us that not only does he take care of our body, he also takes care of our soul. Our soul is that part inside of us that feels things most deeply. Our soul lets us feel happiness. It lets us get excited about things in life. It lets us feel deeply in love. Our soul also lets us feel sadness when things go bad. It lets us ache when we miss someone. It lets us ache when we miss out on something that we had been looking forward to. When you feel that way, the Bible tells you that God promises to restore your soul. How will he do this? It might be that God leads you back home and your, mar your mom puts her arm around you and listens to you. Other times, God might lead you to find a way to connect with a friend. Or at other times, God might lead you to take a walk to one of your favorite outdoor places. When your soul is hurting, God promises to lead you to places where he will restore your soul. On this Mother's Day, we give thanks to God for you, our mothers. We give thanks to God for you others who have been like mothers to us throughout the years. What you do matters so much. And on some days you might even get a glimpse of this. You might find yourself taken aback, eyes shining, a chuckle in your voice as you watch your children do something that just now filled you with delight. But then on other days, we not, might not be able to, to see it. We might not be able to see the difference that we're making in the lives around us. Sometimes we just can't. But the life you are living out, it makes, it makes a huge difference, a profound difference in the lives around you, including the lives of your children. Through you, we have been given life, physical life. Through you, we have been given protection and care throughout our most vulnerable days. And also through you, through your living out your faith life in the particular ways that you do that, we are being nurtured. We are being given the gifts of our Lord, gifts of goodness and grace. So we give thanks to God on this day for our mothers. In Jesus' name, amen. This song talks about how when bad things happen in our world, we can't always understand why. And sometimes we question, where is God? Our faith tells us that God is here with us all the time. He will be with us in good times and in bad. Even though we can't see him now, we know that he is there and we will see him someday. So remember, no matter what happens, God will be with us. As our song says, God is closer to us than the best that we take. God will never leave us behind. He will never let go. i 
we have the passing of the peace, the peace of the Lord be with you. And now we invite you to share that greeting, that peace with the people around you, just to turn to them if there's people in the room with you to say peace be with you and they can return that peace be with you back to you. If you're worshiping with us alone this morning, we invite you to think of somebody that you could text or email or maybe phone call later on and uh, pass that peace of God on to them. And now is the time that we receive the offerings. We thank you for all the ways that you've been supporting the ministries here. It is your offerings that make it possible for our church to do the thriving kinds of outreach ministries that we do here at Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd. So we thank you for that. Um, because we can't pass, pass the offering plate around, we invite you to look on our web pages to find there and how you can be giving. Or if you could just, if you wanted to just give a phone call to our church office, we'll get back to you and teach you how you're able to do that kind of giving. We often end our prayer, our offering time with this prayer here. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We now continue with the prayers of intercession, and the prayers today are going to be prayed by Lisa Berg. She's a member of our congregation, currently living in Mexico City. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all the people according to their needs. Dear Lord, on this Mother's Day, we thank you for all that you have done for us through our mothers and through those who have been like mothers to us. Thank you for being our good shepherd in this way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for the nations of the world as our whole world deals with COVID-19. Help us to follow your call of loving our neighbor. Give us your wisdom and guide us with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our healthcare workers, grocery and delivery workers, and all others whose work puts them at risk of getting the virus. Keep them safe, give them strength, help them to know how much we appreciate them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in the midst of all that we are concerned about, keep our eyes open to the ongoing goodness and beauty of the world around us. Keep us open to seeing the return of birds, the births of new animals, and the sprouting of new plants this spring. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for teachers and coaches who are teaching and guiding young people from afar. Please give us patience and understanding as we find new ways to learn and to connect. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, please be with the people who are separated from their families. Please give us patience and fill our hearts while we are apart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Please join me in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river in my soul. I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river, I got peace like a river in my soul. I got soul like an ocean, I got love like an ocean, I got love like an ocean in my soul. I got love. Thank you, Reese, for your music. And now receive the benediction. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Shepherd me, oh.